In the first part of this Red Ball Iceberg series, we took a look at several more surface level aspects of the Red Ball series and the speedrunning community that surrounds it. To all of the people that subscribed while watching part one, welcome back. If you haven't seen part one yet, make sure to watch it to get caught up to speed. As in this part, we will be exploring topics in the depths that are known by far fewer people. Tiers 4 through 6 are jam-packed with extremely interesting information, and I hope you enjoy watching as we dive into the depths of the Red Ball speedrunning iceberg. Here in Tier 4, we are very far down on the iceberg. The surface of the water can still be seen, but this area is still extremely dark and hidden. Sonya was a person that submitted around two dozen sped up or spliced runs across the Red Ball and Red Ball Category Extensions leaderboards in a saga that lasted several months. The video modifications were often extremely obvious, and the runs weren't even that stellar. Cheating in speedrunning is a really dumb mistake to make, as it completely sacrifices your personal integrity, and getting genuine times are always more fulfilling than taking the easy way out. In level 9 of Red Ball, there is a jointed object that works somewhat like a car piston, turning a rotational force into a constant back and forth motion. If Red Ball wedges himself in the object in just the right way, he can disrupt the jointing enough to cause the plunger to effectively invert, disrupting its normal operation. King.com, the website that initially sponsored games in the Red Ball series, was essentially a gambling website where people could stake real money in what were called skill games in hopes of generating some form of profit. Since King rebranded in 2014 after the success of Candy Crush Saga, the website has been completely wiped of any traces of this activity. All of the Flash games in the Red Ball series are set to run at 30 frames per second, all except for Red Ball, which carries an extremely uncharacteristic 31 FPS. It is largely believed that this was a mistake during development, as the physics in the game are clearly intended to be run at 30 times a second. There isn't any practical reason for setting the game to 31 FPS, as everything functions just fine when it is set to 30. The difference between 30 and 31 FPS is extremely unnoticeable while playing, but it does come with the side effect that the game is actually running faster than intended. 3.33% faster to be exact. If the game ran at 30 frames per second instead, EG's current world record of 307.9 would actually convert to be around a 314.167, completely altering the difficulty of the 10 second barriers of the game. Because of the impact that this would have on mentality, it is likely that the history of the game would be completely different had it not been for this tiny mistake while programming. There isn't any health bar in Red Ball 2 like there is in the Red Ball 4 volumes, but there is actually a secret health bar that Red Ball has relating to swimming in the toxic water. Upon loading a level, Red Ball can spend a total of one second in the water. If this limit is ever exceeded, Red Ball will die and the level will reset. For example, if Red Ball spends 29 frames in the toxic water before exiting, he will have effectively expended 29 out of his 30 hidden hearts. If Red Ball touches the water for a single frame more, he will instantly die. Speedrunners have to manage their toxic health in level 16 to avoid dying and losing a bunch of time. In level 8 of Red Ball, there is a purple car that hides far more pain and agony than you would initially expect. There is no way to get through the car section consistently. The vehicle will toss, turn, flip, and brake to prevent you from reaching the flag. The funniest outcome of failing the car comes with the flying car, where the player will manage to clip into the body of the car, where they will be able to effectively infinitely jump inside of it allowing for the generation of infinite elevation. This is pretty rare, but has still occurred several times in people's speedruns. Make sure to watch Carpolation, linked in the card above, to see some more examples of this. 
In Red Ball 3, there is a PNG of a rabbit hiding in one of the walls in level 14, though some people mistakenly believe that it is a squirrel. It harbors five different gold stars, accounting for 250 out of the 4,780 points available for collection in the entire game. When touching the rabbit, it will let out a squeaking sound. We are unsure what the backstory behind this rabbit is and why Ev decided to include it in the game, as all of that currently remains a mystery. In level 24 of Red Ball 2, there is a puzzle that is normally solved by revealing the shapes formed by hidden blocks and entering it on the three floor tiles on the left side of the level. However, speedrunners just memorize the three symbols to avoid this step. The starting symbol on each of the three floor tiles is randomized, with there being five total symbols to choose from on each tile. The odds of a tile displaying the correct symbol by default is one-fifth, making the combined odds of the combination being correct upon loading the level 1 out of 125. Managing to get this in a run can save a good chunk of time, but it is of course extremely unlikely. Though the official Red Ball series has a wide array of entries, both by the original developer and by other parties, the amount of bootleg and knockoff games of Red Ball trying to capitalize on its success are absolutely immense, both on mobile and on the web. Hell, here's a video of me playing what is supposedly Red Ball 11. There is also a game called Red Ball Forever that is actually impossible to beat. You can't jump over this boulder, which is necessary to complete one of the levels. It's almost like the game was never actually tested. As you can probably tell, most of these games are absolutely awful, though there is one mobile knockoff of Red Ball 1 that is actually somewhat playable, with it having an individual level and full game leaderboard on the Red Ball Elite Google Sheet. On the character sprite in Red Ball 1, there is a tiny purple dot on the outer edge. This spot usually goes unnoticed by people who play the game due to the low contrast that it has against the color of the outer edge and the small size of the character. But it is still just always there, visible in plain sight. In the licensed Red Ball game Red Ball 5, there is a glitch that allows someone to skip multiple levels just by hitting the spacebar multiple times on the level complete screen. How this went unnoticed by the developer is just beyond me, as it happened several times while I was just casually playing the game for the first time. But I digress. This glitch causes some really weird behavior in regards to dying and exiting to the menu, as the player will have to restart multiple times in order to get the character or menu to show up again. With enough elbow grease and, like, four different keyboards, it is possible to skip all the way from level 1 to the last level, level 30, allowing the entire game to be beaten in under a minute. Aside from the squirrel in level 14, there are a bunch of different secret areas in Red Ball 3 that need to be accessed in order to collect every star and 100% the game. Similar areas exist in levels 2, 5, 9, and 13, with other hidden stars existing such as the one under this box in level 12. These spots are extremely hard to find casually, as a walkthrough is pretty much necessary in order to 100% the game for the first time. In Tier 5 of the Iceberg, we have almost descended to the very bottom. Darkness consumes the vision of all who travel here, with public information on the subjects presented being sparse to non-existent. In the original Red and Blue Balls, there is a pseudo-double jump glitch that involves using the other character as an effective slope in order to gain a large amount of height from a single jump, allowing for many puzzles to be partially or fully bypassed. This glitch is more commonly known as buddy jumping or partner jumping, but is sometimes referred to as motor jumping after the person who initially discovered it, Motor Jam. In the Red Ball 4 volumes, there are many instances of apparent RNG in the boss battles that can either save or cost speedrunners a decent chunk of time. However, none of these battles have actual RNG present in them but rather play slightly differently every time due to character position having a great impact on how the boss plays. In the final phase of the Volume 1 boss, the boss can decide to bounce either 4 or 5 times before becoming vulnerable again, a total of 3 times. 
Each five bounce costs anywhere from half a second to an entire second over getting a four bounce. So this final phase can become the make or break point for many speedruns due to the game being very short. The boss can be somewhat manipulated to have a greater chance of jumping only four times, but it is effectively impossible to consistently achieve this result. After the discovery of a new boss strat that will be touched on later in this video, the pseudo RNG was moved to being earlier in the boss in regards to the player's ability to roll it to the other side of the screen. In Volume 2, the boss's position after being stunned changes how far the saw blades have to travel in the first place, though this time save or loss is pretty negligible. In Volume 3, there is a strategy at the beginning of the boss that involves jumping into the first set of crushers, squeezing through the opening, hitting the boss to the other side of the screen, damaging it twice, and then finally getting a third hit once it rolls back. It is quite intricate, quite technical, and saves around 3 to 4 seconds, but it is extremely inconsistent, mainly because the first set of crushers often don't give Red Ball an opening to squeeze back through causing him to be crushed. The crushers have to be jumped into in a certain way to mitigate this possibility, but there will still always be a high chance that Red Ball is never given an opening and dies, making it a source of pseudo RNG. Additionally, at the end of the Volume 3 boss, the bomb enemies meant to damage the boss roll at a seemingly random speed towards the boss after being activated, sometimes being so slow that they never actually end up damaging it. This charade is entirely dependent on player and boss position, but with no way to get consistent results from a setup, it remains yet another way for a run to be killed due to bad luck in the boss. Moving over to Red Ball 4 Mobile, Volume 4 has a boss that has an extremely erratic jump pattern in the third phase, also tied to player position, which has the ability to kill the run, even if the player is really skilled. The Volume 5 boss does appear to have random pellets being shot at the player in the final phase, but these actually aren't random, making it the only boss out of the five volumes that doesn't have any tangible pseudo-randomness present. In the comment section of a glitchless strat video made by Motorjam, there are a few comments made by a person named Dale R. These comments are all relating to glitchless strats, one of which went unnoticed for a year something that was finally found by speedrunner Thog N, which allowed it to be implemented into glitchless runs of the game. In the Red Ball 4 Flash volumes, there is a single frame that the player can pause while a level is being loaded that will display the level objects with a completely white background. This sometimes happens to runners on accident when they are trying to reset the game after failing a run. Star phasing is a glitch present in Red Ball 3 where the player will completely go through a star without collecting it. This is a product of stars having a small hitbox and game lag causing the collision to not be detected. This has happened to people during 100% runs of the game and is really annoying because it can cause pretty hefty time losses. Dev Flags refers to the theory that Evgeny Fedosev, the creator of Red Ball, placed level complete flags at random points in some of the levels for testing purposes. If one of these flags could be found, it would have the potential to save a massive amount of time in the speedrun. Unfortunately, we have yet to find anything of the sort, and we are very unlikely to ever find any dev flags, as none have appeared while looking at the level sprites in a flash decompiler. I guess we can only dream. Carskip refers to the theory that the car in level 8 of Red Ball could somehow be bypassed, in the hopes that this could save some amount of time. Speedrunner Norksor was able to travel down the entire first red slope, which is intended to kill Red Ball upon contact, without dying, using a series of slow, tiny jumps. This opened the possibility that the car skip could actually be achievable. Later, speedrunner RareXCC did actually manage to make it all the way to the flag, but this was a result of his game having an immense amount of lag, with the flag not even raising at the end of the level. A full car skip under a normal game state is still currently unachieved, and it wouldn't even save any time as Red Ball would be getting no speed from traveling downward on the slopes. In level 1 of Red Ball 4 Volume 1, there is a pretty glaring issue when it comes to the water sprite that is present. 
If we travel to this spot right here, you will notice that the water abruptly stops, with the background being completely visible for a small segment. This goes unnoticed by the vast majority of people who play the game, with Evgeny clearly missing the small mistake during development. In Red Ball 4 Mobile, this mistake is absent due to the aspect ratio of the game being altered. Red Ball Hero is the prototype version of Red Ball 3, similar to the relationship between Red Ball Platformer and the final release of Red Ball. In Red Ball Hero, levels 15, a standard level, and 20, the boss fight, are missing, as they were likely still being finished. Another quirk with this pre-release is that the checkpoint flags just don't work and never get activated. Whenever the R button is pressed, the player is sent to the beginning of the level. The absence of the Not Doppler branding that is present in the full release indicates that, just like Red Ball Platformer, this version of the game was used to pitch to potential sponsors. However, unlike Red Ball Platformer, this game did actually manage to make it out into the wild, appearing on some Flash game sites such as Friv.com. Minimum Jumps refers to the challenge of beating Red Ball in as few jumps as possible, with inspiration being drawn from the A button challenge present in Super Mario 64. Some of the strats are pretty inventive, such as this one to complete level 3 in just two jumps, but there isn't much interest in the challenge run due to the large amount of jumps required to beat the game and the difficulty of avoiding these jumps with Red Ball's extremely limited moveset. This is it the bottom of the iceberg. Everything down here is pretty much pitch black, with the surface of the water hundreds of feet up. Only select individuals know all the things that can truly be found here. Over the years, people have tried to theorize various ways of how the bosses in Red Ball 3 and Red Ball 4 volumes could be skipped. In Red Ball 3, damage is dealt to the boss every time it is jumped on, so if there is a way to continually jump on the boss at a rapid pace, it would save a massive amount of time. As for the Red Ball 4 volumes, people have sought the possibility of scaling the invisible wall on the right side of the screen, possibly being able to activate the next level trigger that is normally there in other levels of the game. However, by hacking the game and placing Red Ball above the invisible wall by default, it can be found that the level end trigger is just not there. The only way to finish the level and activate the cutscene is to drain the boss's health bar to zero. Many other things were tried in the five volumes, but nothing monumental could be found. However, the community finally had their breakthrough in Red Ball 4 Volume 1, after a new player by the name of Xdis found that Phase 1, where Red Ball is able to damage the boss three times, could be repeated a second time by pushing the boss to the other side of the screen after damaging it for a third time. The player could then damage the boss three more times in the second iteration of Phase 1, killing the boss and completely bypassing Phases 2 and 3. After further optimizations were made, mainly through rolling the boss to the other side of the screen instead of pushing it, the trick ended up saving a massive 25 seconds over the traditional strat, which takes a skilled player 54 to 55 seconds to complete on average. In the Red Ball 4 Flash volumes, the three buttons for pausing, resetting, and opening the walkthrough are actually the exact same shape that Red Ball is. It is likely that Evgeny didn't want them to be an exact circle, but also didn't want to have to make another organic outline, so he just copied Red Ball sprite and changed it up a bit. In May of 2020, there was a very small tournament held between seven Red Ball 1 runners that ended up with myself as the victor and Yellow Skarmory as the runner-up. This tournament was extremely closed off and no matches were recorded, but it set the foundation for what would become the far more successful second Red Ball tournament with double the amount of participants, 14, with Rare EG as the victor and myself as the runner-up. In level 13 of Red Ball 2, it is possible to activate a checkpoint flag in the level sooner than intended by jumping into the spike pit. The player can then backtrack to collect a few stars and reset again, where the level can then be completed. This saves just around 2 seconds over normal method of completion, mainly due to Red Ball not having to lower out of the wind section after collecting the 3 stars up there. The reason that this is at the bottom of the iceberg is that we have no idea what causes this to happen. It's a complete anomaly. Nothing really stands out as being off in the code. If this checkpoint can be activated early, what if other checkpoints can be activated early as well? 
Will we find more instances of this by pure chance? Or will we be able to find other examples by cracking the code of the early activation in level 13? It's a deep rabbit hole that has everyone continually guessing. Missing runs refers to the fact that many speedruns have been removed or deleted from the leaderboards across the Red Ball series, one of them being a time as fast as 3.28 in Red Ball 1. Most of these runs have been deleted by the people who uploaded them, but some runs were also purged due to the 4.30 game audio cutoff that was implemented in Red Ball 1 in 2017. Though many of these runs were restored back to the leaderboards after the cutoff was lowered to 4 minutes in 2020, some were probably just never added back. Additionally, many runners have deleted the videos attached to their runs from YouTube, leaving a couple spots in the history of these games incomplete. These runs could have featured new strategies or inventive gameplay that have now been completely lost to time. When the Red Ball community first started exploring Red and Blue Balls, the side series of Red Ball, we became quickly frustrated at the lack of speedrunning skips, being forced to complete the inconsistent on intuitive puzzles present in each level of the game. Hell, we even struggled to complete the game at all in the first place due to the sparse amount of information on how to solve some of the puzzles and the non-functional hint button. Unfortunately, the pause jump strategy used in Red Ball 2 barely gave the player any extra height, rendering it pretty much completely useless. At a dead end, I decided to put up a whopping $5 bounty for anyone who would be able to discover some form of useful double jump glitch in the game. Not long after, Motor Jam discovered the aforementioned buddy jumping, allowing him to claim the bounty. In his speech at a Flash game conference, Evgeny mentioned that he made a game called Raindrop before creating Red Ball, with a blurry photo displaying some of the gameplay. Unfortunately, no traces of this game have been found online, leaving the community to wonder what the gameplay was like, unsure whether the game was ever released in the first place. The Red Ball 4 Flash volumes all feature heavy obfuscation in their code, which makes it pretty much impossible to read and decipher what is really going on. JPEXS, a piece of Flash decompiling software, sometimes fails to decompile extremely crucial methods in the game's code, leaving us completely unsure what the code there even is. It is possible that, shrouded in all this secrecy, there are crucial bits of information in the game's code that could give us a better understanding of the game, possibly allowing us to invent new speedrunning strategies with the newfound knowledge. However, with the code effectively locked up, we can only sit and imagine what secrets may lie within. Similar to the boss skip theories mentioned before, Early Girlfriend describes the theory that Red Ball could somehow clip or break open the cage that Pink Ball is lowered down in earlier than intended, creating the potential for a massive time save. The level ends when Red Ball makes contact with Pink Ball, a possibility that is separated by just a thin shim of metal. Dang Shibara is currently the world record holder for the slowest time on the Red Ball 3 leaderboards. All of their speedruns on speedrun.com were performed in around a four-month time period from late 2015 to early 2016, with no apparent activity being recorded since then. Their blazing fast Red Ball 3 time of 45.36 actually used to be the world record due to no other runs being present on the leaderboards. The description of this run reads, pretty good run, will be hard to improve. The world record as of recording this video is a 536, exactly 40 minutes faster than this run, a run which, once again, used to be the world record. Truman to Good is a speedrun.com user that never submitted any runs, but still managed to change the course of history of Red Ball speedrunning with just one guide on the 17th of October 2017. It reads, If you pause and jump while on the ground, your game will be paused, but when you clicked P again, you will jump. Knowing this, if you press P and jump at the same time, then hold space and click P, you jump twice as high. I found this messing around, so this should make the run a lot easier. That's right, this random person who created a speedrun.com account presumably just to make this post, discovered pause jumping, the most important speedrunning glitch present in both Red Ball 2 and Red Ball 3. This post actually went unnoticed for quite a while, as Red Ball 3 was extremely inactive at the time, and because guide posts are far less likely to be seen than form posts. 
It was only after Motor Jam noticed the post that I used it to beat Jandog with a 638 on the 17th of October, 2018, exactly a year after the trick was initially discovered. On the same day, I achieved a 1352 with the glitch in Red Ball 2. In Volume 4 of Red Ball 4 Mobile, the second phase of the boss had a massive change with the updated release on July 8th, 2020. A once difficult moving laser section was trimmed down to just a short squeeze, reducing both the difficulty and length of the boss. Though it could have been removed because of the moderate difficulty, it is still completely unknown exactly why the change was made. For all we know, it could have been a complete mistake. The patch notes for that July 8th update only mentions bug fixes, saying nothing about the substantial change to the boss. And there you have it, the Red Ball speedrunning iceberg fully explained. From common knowledge to theoretical pipe dreams, this two-part series has revealed a great deal about the Red Ball series and the secrets that lie within. While this iceberg is by no means a fully comprehensive knowledge base of the Red Ball speedrunning community, it still holds a massive wealth of knowledge, with it still having many holes that we can hope to fill in one day. I thank you for watching to the end of the video, and I encourage you to check out some of the other Flash and Red Ball related content present on my channel, if this was of any interest to you. Also, consider following me on Twitch and joining my Discord server, both are linked in the description.